uh, co-founded the Green Office at the FU University in Amsterdam. Uh, after graduating, I started working at the municipality of Amsterdam. Uh, I was a trainee. Uh, the Amsterdam has a great traineeship, by the way, so uh, with a lot of possibilities to do awesome things in the municipality for the city. Uh, and I wasn't necessarily planning on starting a green office there. Uh, I was actually working on something else within the social domain. And then I just walked around through the, uh, the buildings and I thought we have such high ambitions for the city, but what are we doing ourselves to give the right example to the Amsterdammer, to the uh, people living in the city? Um, and the organization is very big. Uh, it's like 15,000, 17,000 employees. So it really needed a, a place where sustainability could, get, uh, could come together. So I thought, oh, maybe the green office model would apply here so I just pitched the idea to one of the CEOs and she just said go for it start it and I started as a trainee but then uh, quickly she um, yeah she made it possible for me to be a program manager and uh, to start this further and on this picture you see me with uh, an intern that uh, was joined us in the start um, and we just start we sat somewhere we put a flag of the green office in a building and we just started uh, so that was the beginning um, but this is the green office team now it's uh 10 people i'm actually not even part of the green office team anymore since a couple of months i uh, work for a different department within the university but emma still is a part of the green office uh, and has an amazing team of uh, specialists on procurement for example but also communication officers project leaders on different uh, areas so uh, a great team to uh, really get the movement going um so let's start at the beginning well actually maybe a fun fact to mention about this picture is that uh we're all sitting on sustainable ways to go through the city because we did the low car diet campaign and we uh challenged all our colleagues to um, take sustainable uh yeah sustainable ways of traveling uh to the office so that is a fact about this picture and then why did we start the green office? Um, if you're active in the green, uh, in sustainability, you're, I probably don't need to tell this, but it's good to mention this. Uh, we're gonna see climate change throughout uh, the whole city, um, well, throughout the whole world, but in the city, uh, some of the effects will be even more extreme, uh, such as the heat, uh, but also the drought. There will be more heavy rainfall, which you already can see in the city that the rain can't. Uh, we can't process the rain on the streets uh, because it's so heavy and it's getting more heavy and flooding, of course. So these are the things we want to tackle. Um, and that's partly by mitigation, but also by adaptation. So Amsterdam as a city wants to be climate neutral in 2050. So that means everybody that's in the city, every house, every building, every, uh, every company, everything has to be climate neutral. Um, and we've divided that in a couple of themes. So uh, areas of sustainability. So first of all, we want to be climate neutral, which is like more, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's like an umbrella over all the ambitions, uh, but more specifically, it means we want to be independent of natural gases. We actually have to do that before 2040 already. Uh, and more specifically, everything that's being built new already has to be uh, free of natural gases. But for the exist existing city, which is mainly, for example, the center, uh, we have to make a big shift um, to be free of natural gases. And then also air quality. Of course, that's also very important. It's a very busy city, so we need to make sure that we can breathe, breathe proper properly. It's linked to sustainability, but also to health. And that also means um, being what we call in Amsterdam auto lieu, which means uh, not using the uh, car as much um, and making more room for people uh, on the bikes and walking and other ways of transport. And then we have Amsterdam Circular, which is uh, about the materials we use mostly um, and closing the loop uh, and creating less waste. So the, these four are mo mostly about uh, the mitigation of climate change. But of course, we are already seeing the effects that I mentioned in the beginning. So uh, the heat, the drought, etc. So we also have to do climate adaptation, which means we already have to make the city rainproof. We already have to 
make it more green to be able to uh, to yeah to ha stand the heat. Um, so that's also something we're working on. And then what we did for the green office is we took all the policies for the city that were made for the inhabitants and we translated them to so what do we need to do as an organization to give the right example and to be able to uh, to handle this challenge. Uh, so, and that we translated that in one program for a sustainable organization, which is also so interesting to know that there is has already been a department for sustainability for the city for years. Uh, but we created a place where uh, sustainability in the organization can have a place. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's only about operations, so only within the buildings. It's also about everything we as a municipality control in the city. That means the lighting, the streets, uh, the, um, the cars that are being driven by our employees. Um, so in this picture, you can see an overview of all the elements we're actually working on. Yeah. Um, and then we translated the, uh, the goals. For, so we created a scope. What are we, do we want to handle as a green office? Uh, and we created five themes that we are working on for the green office and we made smart goals for those five themes to work towards. Um, so reduce, we are trying to reduce the energy, energy usage of the municipality and at the same time uh, maximize the sustainable green energy of the, uh, uh, of the organization, which means we're also investing in ways to create more because there's not enough uh, green energy in the country to create more, so investing in for example, wind energy. Uh, we're trying to do uh, create 100% CO2 neutral business operations. So that means everything within all the procurements, everything we buy, everything we do. Uh, all the things we buy have to be circular uh, in 2030. So uh, we're seeing how we can use different materials, but also use other ways of circular innovations to achieve that. Make climate adaptive buildings and trains uh, and of course we can't achieve this without also working on our, our colleagues so making able they are um, they can uh, integrate sustainability not only on the workplace so a lot of people think about oh yeah i have to reuse my cup i have to uh, separate my waste or everything that's in the building but we also help them to uh, think about sustainability within the policies that they're actually making and that's uh, how we get to the green office. And Emma can tell you more about that, actually. Uh, thank you, uh, Tabitha. Uh, yeah, so my name is Emma and I'm currently working at the green office. Um, so our goal and goal is for Amsterdam to be a leader, international leader in sustainability. Um, and uh, just remember, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my team is <laughs> my team is uh, very small compared to the size of the municipality. So what we do is we advise, inform, and connect our colleagues, and we monitor the progress of the organization on achieving our goals. So I saw that Robert asked in the chat um, if uh, he asked if we feel like. Um, events like COVID-19 could um, speed up the process of, of, of making the municipality sustainable. And it's really quite challenging to know for sure, but one of the most important things that you can do is monitor um, what you are putting out in terms of uh, energy, um, uh, uh, product usage uh, and such kind of things. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a really key part of getting a grip of you know what kind of things affect uh, achieving your goal um the, the, thank you so uh basically i just wanted to share some of the things that we do now um because we are with such a small team um yeah there is a limited amount of actions that you can take and uh, the first example i wanted to share with you is our ambassador network so uh, we want to kind of uh, spread our uh, our um, our uh, input in the organization um, by uh, getting ambassadors in uh, every department of the of the uh, municipality. So um, we have forty ambassadors, and they are our art 
eyes and ears uh, and we support them with uh, their sustainable goals in their own department. Uh, but also they give us information about how everything is going. And one tip for every anyone who would like to start a green office is to uh, start with people who have a green heart and uh, who are actually um, intrinsically motivated to, to do this next to their actual jobs. So these are all people who did this next to their own job and some of them managed to convert, convert this uh, ambassadorship into actually a role uh, in their official job. So what is good to mention, because I see uh, somebody asking, do you need to live in Amsterdam? You don't actually need to live in Amsterdam, but you need to work for Amsterdam because it's all about uh, working on the sustainable policies. So we want our colleagues to be able to activate their whole department. Yeah, and for example, you can live in um, Saadam, that's not Amsterdam, uh, and work on our own real estate. So then you are contributing contributing in your job to a more sustainable Amsterdam and a more sustainable organization. Yeah. And within all domains actually. And the, we st also started this out of necessity because we, well, I started on my own and then I had some people joining me, but we can't be everywhere. So I needed to search for allies and then, uh, and this was a way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, Tabita already mentions that a really big part of achieving all your SMART goals is actually taking your colleagues along with you. Uh, so one of my show pieces <laughs> is uh, the Green College. Uh, we founded it about a year ago and it's about um, practically uh, basic uh, sustainability teams, but then we link them to um, what it will actually mean uh, for your job. So it's a really fun and easy way to engage your, uh, your colleagues with sustainability and let them learn more. Um, so this is kind of a, a more a tip, but uh, for us really important, be op opportunistic in your ideas. If you go very much methodically about everything, you probably will miss some big chances. Um, and sometimes something just comes along and you just kind of have to um, seize the moment. So this um, is called Space Per Wout and we removed parking spaces for employees to create a garden. And basically my colleague uh, just saw that our director, the deciding director for this uh, piece of property, really wanted to create a greener office. Um, so he just took a chance and made a bold proposition for her. And because she was already looking for a solution for her office space, it was easier to uh, persuade her in this case. So now we actually have a really nice garden uh, at this office space. It was not planned. So that's the point. It's not, it wasn't planned. It just came up and he took a chance. Um, so the ambassador network is one of the ways we can uh, inspire other departments and have more impact, uh, but also uh, we can facilitate other departments with um, workshops where we um, help them to work on their specific um, goals. Uh, so for example, um, this workshop uh, was with uh, gardens of the schools. And they didn't really, they, they knew they wanted to do, be more sustainable, but they didn't know how. So we organized a workshop for them to come up with their own ideas of how their department can be more sustainable. Yeah, so if you think about other departments, I mean, Emma already mentioned real estate, but for example, when we have a workshop with our IT department, we think about green ideas for our uh, IT for our uh, colleagues. If we are with the facilities department, we think about green catering or green uh, green cars. So for each department, we try to think uh, on their area of expertise, how they can integrate sustainability and create a more sustainable city. Yeah, yeah. and we try to let them come up um, with as many ideas on their own, because then they feel more responsible for the stuff that comes out of a workshop like this. Yeah. Um, I think that's something, this is something that the Green Office Movement is also very good at. It's connecting people, basically, basically the, the overall movement is uh, doing that. But we also try to do it within our own municipality um, by having an online platform uh, where we share stories, like success stories, but we also share our events and all 
kind of uh, tools um, and there's room for discussion. So sometimes everybody can post questions in this platform. Uh, another tip is to buy sustainable and challenge the market. So actually, um, uh, the city of Amsterdam is quite big, so it needs a lot of stuff. So every year we buy billions of euros of services uh, goods. Uh, so when you um, influence this, you have really a big impact. Um, so one of the main ways for a governmental organization to create impact is to buy sustainable. Um, so what we do is we help the procurement department with sustainability requirements for each tender. Um, so this example you see on the picture is um, the end result uh, where bins that were completely circular built. So what we as a green office can do is help people that work uh, in this uh, procurement department to ask the right questions to get a sustainable solution from the market. So I actually see a question about how do you dif differentiate between what the Green Office does and the municipality does. So it's good to know that the Green Office has become a department be between uh, uh, in the uh, municipality. So it's really an integrated part of the uh, organization. And at the same time, we try to give uh, the whole organization the feeling that we are for, there for everybody. And we're also there to pinpoint uh, uh, things that don't go really good and that we need to improve. So we try to also be critical. Uh, and at the same time, we also want to help them get further. But we're there for the whole organization. So as already mentioned, we try to monitor uh, our impact. Um, we ask the departments to basically give us all their specs and um, we monitor how well they are doing with sustainability goals. Um, this way they translate their efforts into data which is measurable and comparable so pro progress can be shown. Um, because in the end we are doing all these things to minimize our footprint. It's not like a fun club or something. That's our end goal. Um, yeah, so what I should mention is that some things are easier to measure than others. So of course your energy usage is quite easy to uh, measure and circular use of materials, materials is very hard. And then of course you also have your scopes, one, two and three. And the further you go from um, your own organization, the harder it is to know how much yeah, CO2 or whatever you want to measure at that point is actually being used. But we, um, we hired an external um, um, officer office that specialized in these kind of things to help us with that. I also see a question, uh, do you also take uh, actions besides connecting and informing? So the Green Office tries to empower others to uh, achieve sustainability because we realize that as a small club within a huge organization, we can't achieve it on our own. And we also want sustainability to be a way of thinking for every employee in every plan and action that they do. Uh, and on the other time, we also take some quick wins that we can achieve some projects that either make a great impact or create awareness and we do those ourselves. So we also try to um, also find a good combination of doing things ourselves and empower others to be able to to be able to integrate sustainability. Yeah, and in the end, the Green Office is a program. So our end goal will be that sustainability isn't something that you have to mention anymore. It's just, you don't have to say sustainable building, just every type of building is sustainable. So we hope that uh, in the end, we will not be needed anymore because it's an integral part of our decision-making. So we, uh, this, these were the projects. If you have any questions about the projects, we can uh, also handle them later on. Um, we created a summary of what were for us uh, the successes and the, uh, and the lessons we learned while setting up a green office. Um, the lucky, the people that are starting now are actually pretty lucky because you have a lot more momentum. Uh, I mean, you also ask questions, does COVID-19 have an effect? I think if we have a conversation right now uh, 
a lot more is possible because COVID made us uh, a more flexible organization. We just had to uh, make everybody digital, which we didn't do completely. So we, we are used to creating a quick change uh, and, and it made us more dynamic. And also I think people see that there's a lot of going on with uh, the environment that we need to handle, that we need to take care of. So there's mo more momentum now if you start and use that. Uh, also, don't give up. It's uh, There were also moments when I started this that I thought, oh my God, what did I get myself into? Uh, but it's normal. It's normal for it to feel like a big blur in the beginning and then in the end it will come together. So you also need to keep going. Uh, find, find allies. Don't do it alone. Look in your workplace. If there are people who are also uh, very excited about this, uh, just get them together, start a working group um, and make a plan. Uh, and then once you have a group and you have a plan, go to the commitment, uh, go to the top and get commitment there as well, because in the end, you will need support from the whole organization. Um, and don't take no for an answer. Uh, sometimes you just need to start doing and then um, make it more formal. So just start doing stuff and then ask uh, if you can get more help and support. Um, and what really helped us is the fact that uh, there was a platform missing. There was a place missing where everybody's ideas and uh, ambitions could get together and where they could get help for this. And that's what we actually created. And we are a central place where it doesn't matter in which department you work, you can always um, knock on our door and we will help you. Uh, and it's Im also important to not focus your energy on the people uh, being negative about this movement. Just use the positive energy and go and the others will join later on. Um, and set scopes. I think Tim also asked us in the beginning, yeah, why don't you also take the more social part of sustainability uh, into account? Because if you look at the donut economy and um, uh, and you in the sustainable development goals, you can see there's also a lot of social elements uh, integrated. But we already, as, a, as Amsterdam, as a municipality, we've already been investing in the social part of sustainability for quite some time. We have some departments really focusing on that and doing excellent job. Uh, excellent work and now it was time to take more the environmental side and uh, put a lot more energy into that part so we had to keep the scope uh, realistic for us yeah and also while giving this presentation i really feel like it's it sounds pretty you know uh, thought out everything's under control but we are always adjusting always trying new things um it's always good to just see if what you are doing is is working reevaluate if it's still relevant and yeah it's trial and error basically uh, but like to be the set you just have to keep yeah and it helps to make uh, your goals and your ambitions very smart and to measure that and so that you know you know that you're actually working towards something and not just doing everything because it's fun which is also an important reason but in the end we want to minimize our co2 footprint yeah, and that way you also have something to talk about with when you go and get this commitment from the top, because you have kind of backed up your plan and, uh, you know, you have a story to tell. Yeah. So I think these will be the main uh, do's and don'ts. Um, and I'm actually very curious. Uh, would you start a green office at your own work if you're just say you're starting tomorrow at, at a place of work, uh, what would what would be holding you back or what would be uh, helping you with that? Or any other questions? <laughs> or do you have any other questions exactly? Um, I had a question about the involvement. So you say that the team is now about 10 people. In what way are they involved? Because in the, the green offices, they, they, they are job students, so paid for a certain amount of hours or volunteers. How, is this like part of your job description or is this voluntary? How does it work? So we are actually very lucky. So for me, it's I'm not working full time, but it's it's my job and also all the other people at the green office. And some people do have um, other tasks, at other departments as well, but mainly it's also 
has got to do something with our assignment. So for example, I have one uh, colleague uh, who is our CO2 advisor and he's now um, giving a lot of advice on procurement. So uh, I think he's fully employed by the Green Office, but he also works a lot with his procurement department. So the, the people that are really green, green, working for Green Office are Green Office, but then you also have those 40 ambassadors who are more similar to something that a uh, traditional Green Office at the university um, would be. They are more, well, they're not volunteers, but they are doing this next to their official job. And some of them have transferred their, um, their, their work for the Green Office into their job. So somebody is now the sustainability officer of his department. So he actually made it into his job. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we actually even started without a budget. Uh, we just started doing and using the people and the uh, and the, the possibilities we had in the organization already and then working towards more concrete goals. And then we got a budget to realize all these projects. I think it's great that, uh, if I understand it well, that you formed a separate um, department. So within the whole municipality. Um, so that's really terrific. And I guess I'm assuming that you guys, because you shared that you're giving workshops, that you're strongly connected with other municipalities and cities and you can support and learn from each other. And maybe also a question for Tim. I mean, the Green Office movement is a worldwide movement uh, or it's, um, it has the ambitions to become one or, uh, and so I'm, I'm a little bit curious and maybe I'm asking something I should know already, but sorry for that, about the national and international uh, connections that are made. And um, do, you, do you want to tackle first uh, how you're connected with other municipalities? To be Tarana. Yeah, please, if you want to share. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think it's not as organized as you might expect. So we do have contact with uh, uh, Rotterdam Sustainability Department. We actually went there also. So they told us everything that they are doing. Um, and also with some other um, municipalities, but I feel like that we could improve on this part, that it could be more less like I give you how we are doing it and then I give you how, uh, how I am doing it and a little bit more like working together or something like that. But um, yeah, it's, I think it's uh, in kinderschoenen sometimes a little bit, so. Yeah. <laughs> And it's also because um, we, I feel like we as bigger cities also have a responsibility to try this first uh, because uh, smaller um, municipalities do not have the means to uh, get a, this many paid employees or budget for their plans as we do as a big city. Mm -hmm. So most of them are kind of looking towards the big cities um, to uh, do the trial and error part and then they can take the successes on for their uh, municipality. Yeah. And also, I think it's good to remember that in Amsterdam, we have a really big sustainability, yeah, sus sustainable department. Um, but that was traditionally, traditionally really focused on the city. So how can we make the city more sustainable? How can we make uh, other people more sustainable? So um, in some, we, we kind of made a distinction between our own organization and the city. But in, that's not the case in uh, other municipalities or not all. Thanks. Maybe a short question uh, before Tim uh, replies. Uh, you built this communication platform, right, to sort of connect people within the municipality. And so, is it is it open for other uh, municipalities also to find ideas or? Well, the communication platform, the TamTam, -tam, uh, is actually was already in place. It's like an internal Facebook uh, groups sort of uh, sort of platform that was already there, and then all the employees could make groups for their projects or whatever. So we just created a new page within the uh, platform, but we try to make it as refined as possible within the possibilities of that platform. Uh, 
Um, and it's, well, the main target uh, group is the employees, but it's also possible for external parties to be invited in. And I think for some things, we actually also do that, right, Emma? Yeah, so like the discussions and stuff are um, private. I think that's also a good thing because then people feel more free to speak their minds and to go in depth about specific situations for the municipality of Amsterdam. But the events um, that we organize, we make also public and we share them, for example, with the other green office move. Um, green offices in Amsterdam and some of the people that we know in other municipalities. So that's really uh, quite nice that sometimes they come and visit us uh, through these events. Great, thanks. Well, yeah, for the international connections, um, well, I mean, the, the green office movement so far is mainly focused on students active at universities and there's um, 51 green offices now in total, including this one. So, um, but yeah, I think there's one also at another at a school. Um, but besides those two examples, I think most are at universities, universities of applied sciences. Um, and yeah, it's it's global in the sense that there's um, one in Costa Rica, there's one in uh, Uganda, and one in Belarus and uh, Minsk. But uh, otherwise, other than that, it's mostly in, uh, in Europe, like in the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, Italy, Sweden, and um, one in the UK. And Tim, what's your vision for the Green Office movement? Like, what would you like it to become or evolve into? Um, well, I mean, we actually have our 10 year anniversary coming up uh, in September. So the first Green Office was launched in September in Maastricht, um, 2010. And this discussion will also happen there again. So we will explore some pathways for how the movement can continue evolving. And some ideas are that, you know, that more of these kind of um, examples um, could happen in the future, that the Green Office is not just within universities, but also more municipalities or other public institutions, perhaps even at uh, companies or private organizations, um, although the context might be a slightly different one. Um, I, I remember that you also mentioned uh, that you were exploring launching a green office in the police uh, department or something like that. Um, so maybe that would be also an interesting question. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> no, basically we were in contact with the national police because they were already doing their own sustainability department. Um, and um, yeah, I don't think they will call it a green office, but, but yeah, it's their own sustainable department yeah and they wanted to know how we uh, approached everything within our own organization and uh, one of the interesting things is that you then see that everybody has their own scope so it's really important to look at you know it's good to get inspiration from everybody else but then also choose what's important to you so for them for example I think they were really thinking about more social and inclusive uh, inclusivity topics uh, to put in there so yeah, I think that would be also part of um, my vision for the Green Office movement that uh, it's, it goes beyond the ecological dimension to also integrate with social and economic parts and um, to go more beyond the campus as well so that if Green Offices are, are active within universities that there's also strong cl collaboration with the municipality, with local NGOs and social enterprises. and. Um, yeah, that also go that the alumni, the more alumni basically from green offices at universities take this experience like Tabita did forward into their careers and launch similar kind of um, organization. Yeah, I do have to say uh, that I really respect Tabita for going for this because she basically created her own assignment for her traineeship. She just decided that this is what she wanted to do. Of course, she already had experience with the uh, Green Office at the FU, but uh, I think it's really admirable and um, yeah, to me also uh, inspiring uh, Yeah, to see what's possible if you really want something and truly believe in it. 
Thanks, Emma. That's really sweet of you to say. I think for me, it would also be a dream if we could motivate other people from the Green Office movement to, no matter what organization they're going to work uh, at after graduating, this model can be modified and uh, integrated in any organization, I believe. So if everybody could, it's quite a big movement. If we could get all those students and alumni to start something in their next step, we would create an, uh, an immense movement in the more professional world. Great, well, thanks for seeding that. So let's uh, hope we'll get people excited about this vision and uh, see uh, many more green offices and many different kinds of organizations in the coming years. Um, yeah, I think it's time to wrap up. Um, do you have any closing questions? Any last burning questions? Um, closing remarks? Well, thanks guys. I really enjoyed the presentation. Well done. And uh, it's very important work what you're doing uh, in any level. And I like uh, specifically that you're very open-minded about supporting other groups and doing it under other names or banners and offering this as a blueprint. And uh, it's, I understand it's small steps, but it's uh, every step has an influence. So uh, yeah, I salute you for that. Thanks a lot. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, and I just posted in the chat um, the link to the websites of the Green Office, the municipality in Amsterdam, as well as their email. Um, also the link to the Green Office Movement page. And I did, I did found this document about the donut model that's been being applied now in the municipality of Amsterdam. So that's also really interesting. Yeah. Well, that's also a cool thing that we actually forgot to mention that uh, last year as a Green Office, we were part of the program circularity program uh, and that with Kate Rayworth herself we created a donut uh, model for the city which was really cool and the strategy just launched a couple of months ago you can also find it on the website of the city to know more about how we integrate the donut model within uh, our city. <laughs>